Well, good evening, everyone. And lovely to see you as we gather here this evening for our Harvest Thanksgiving service in Drumliga. Uh, you braved the elements, the wind and the rain, and we've made it. And we'll make it on our way home again uh, shortly. So welcome, one and all, and all who are visiting with us. It's lovely uh, to have you. Uh, we know the weather hasn't been kind today. It was a day for sitting at home, if you could. Uh, but we, uh, we're here now, and the Lord is with us. We call ourselves to worship with Psalm 85 and verse 12. The Lord indeed will give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. And in church this evening, we're surrounded by the harvest uh, that has been gathered in visual reminders to remind us that God is indeed good. So with that in mind, we gather to worship our God who is good, and who has blessed us with another harvest. And so we're going to sing our opening hymn, Who Has Held the Oceans in His Hands? The ladies will begin first, and then there will be a part for the man will follow as the words and the music lead us. So let us worship once. The God who keeps his promises that as long as the earth endures, there will be seed time and harvest. God, you send the wind, you send the sun, and we know you send the rain to bring forth growth. We praise you for all your love towards us, and we praise you, and we raise the song of harvest home, ere before the storms begin. We only have to look out at night and see the beauty of the night sky, and we marvel at your greatness and your majestic power. 
Father God, we look around us in church and we are reminded of your goodness and your creativity, the colours, the variety, the smells, such a poignant service as this that brings us back maybe to harvest years ago. And so this evening it is with thankfulness, our hearts are filled with thankfulness for your love for us. We thank you for Jesus who suffered and died on the cross and gave his life for us so that we could experience new life. We thank you for the blessings that are ours through Jesus. Sins forgiven, joy and peace, home with you in heaven for all of eternity. We praise you for the riches of your grace found in Jesus. And as we come to you this evening, we confess our sinfulness. We are not the people we should be. We do not love you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. We do not love others as we should. And so, Father, forgive us. And at this harvest time, we confess our greed that we maybe are more concerned about our own needs than the needs of others. We store up for ourselves without sharing with others. We take your good gifts and never offer a word of thanks. So cleanse us from all unrighteousness and ingratitude and help us to have thankful hearts. Fill us this evening with your Holy Spirit so that we will truly live for you and be with each one of us and as we hear your word and as we sing your praise and as we listen to your word and join together in prayer that your blessing would be upon us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At harvest time we look up and we thank God, rightly so, first and foremost. But then harvest also calls us to look out and to remember the needs of others. And so our next hymn calls us to look out and so it's give thanks my soul for harvest and it's a lovely familiar tune.
My word is like the snow on the rain that comes down from the sky to water the earth. They make the crops grow and provide seed for sowing and food to eat. So also will be the word that I speak. It will not fail to do what I plan for you. It will do everything I send it to do. You will be led out of the city in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into singing, and the trees will shout for joy. Cypress trees will grow where now there are briars. Myrtle trees will come up in place of thorns. This will be a sign that will last forever, a reminder of what I, the Lord, have done. Amen. Thank you, John. And now the choir will sing Psalm 150, uh, a piece composed, I think, by the Gettys. Praise the Lord.
Latham. We thank you for your preparation over recent weeks. We know it's been a busy time with the School Arts concert and uh, Harvest, and before you know it, uh, there'll be other uh, services. I won't mention <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> but thank you. And thank you to all who decorated the church, uh, our younger families decorated the inside uh, with jobs and that they're involved with, and other families decorated other areas, and I'm sure you'll agree they did a marvellous job. So thank you to everyone for their creativity uh, over the last few days. Um, what else have we? Midweek on Wednesday, this, uh, Wednesday there's midweek Bible study with Apple to Heart afterwards, so uh, do make your way along to the committee room on Wednesday at 8pm. I return the ballot papers for elders election today or next Sunday. Uh, uh, there's more ballot papers in the vestibule. Remember the shoe boxes on Remembrance uh, Sunday. Uh, communion class on Wednesday this week and Mount Joy at 7pm. And I forgot to mention this morning the Apple Fair, but we'll have our usual uh, stall at the Apple Fair this Friday. And if you can help with uh, apple tarts or scones or buns or cakes, uh, bring them in on Thursday evening. All the details are in the back of your order of service. And uh, I know you'll always rise to the occasion. And it's a good opportunity to get into Castle there and see the new diamond. I haven't seen it yet. So uh, the jury's out. I'll wait till I see it myself. And uh, that's Friday this week. It is with a sense of thankfulness and joy and gratitude this evening that I am able to announce to the congregation uh, that the Harvest Appeal this morning uh, was able to clear all the debt on the church hall. And so I'm able to announce that after three and a half years uh, that the hall will be paid for this evening or was paid for this morning. Now that doesn't mean you don't have to give anything this evening. <laughs> uh, but this morning we owe £50,000 uh, to the bank and to interest free loans and we had 40000 and so we have well over that 10000 excess. So as of this evening and this week our treasurer will be uh, paying off all the debts. Uh, uh, now that leaves us with nothing then in our building fund. But isn't it nice to be finished and to have to just have it all cleared. And so on behalf of the Kirk Session and Committee, I want to pay tribute to uh, the congregation for your generosity, your faithfulness. And I know we have a number of members from Mount Joy with us, and they want me to thank you for your support and your generosity. Uh, so within uh, a short space of time, we took our mortgage out for 15 years. You know, there's not many people get their mortgage paid in three and a half, is there? Uh, so we have a lot to be thankful for, and we thank God for his goodness to us here in Trinidad. With that in mind, our offering for the Lord's work uh, will be received. And we give you the credit and we give you the glory and we give you all the honour. 
And so we thank you for the generosity of the fa our families and friends and neighbours from here in from Liga and Mountjoy and other churches and other areas. We give you our thanks this evening and our hearts are truly filled with thankfulness for all that you have done for us and all that you will continue to do in this area. So we present these gifts to you with joy and with gratitude. Amen. We couldn't have a harvest service without singing, Come ye thankful people, come. And surely if ever there was people to be thankful, it's the people here in Drumliga this evening. And the singing has been brilliant up to this. I think we now need to really raise the roof. And we don't want to raise it that it'll fall in. <laughs> we have no money left to fix it. <laughs> but let's raise the roof as we sing as we have truly thankful people this evening. Come, be thankful people. All the same we gathered in before the storm is very appropriate. And uh, so let's stand and sing. The organ and the piano will lead us. Plough it, wouldn't that plough it? And then you need to harrow it and get it all level. 
And here's horses over here. I was speaking to a man last week, and he ploughed a field. And when you hear this, it took him one day to do one acre, and that was 11 miles. Could you imagine walking 11 miles up and down a field after two horses? That'd be tough going. So don't complain about going to school tomorrow. <laughs> no okay. Oh, no school tomorrow. Maybe the storm, maybe the electric would be off. But he's scattering the seed. And then what has to happen? The seed, it has to... Does it just sit in the ground? What is it? Well, it has to grow. What does it need to grow? What does this seed need to grow, do you think? It needs something up in the sky. We didn't see a lot of it this year. The sunshine. And then it needs something else. We saw lots of this. Rain. Rain. And it needs then the heat. And then the, the crop will grow. And then what happens when it all, the barley or the wheat or the corn is all ready? What goes into the field to cut it? Do you know what, what's the big machine called? A combine harvester. A combine <laughs> harvester. Brilliant. A combine harvester goes in and cuts it. And then the grain is taken away. And the grain then is used to make maybe bread. Who had a slice of bread today? Do you have any bread? Did you have any bread? Yeah, toast. Did you have any, Charlie? Yes. Did you have girls up? Do you have any bread today? No bread. Well, maybe it's used to make cornflakes. Did anybody have cornflakes today? We have about ten pancakes. Oh, I don't know. Well, I'm sure if the corn, the barley, the wheat, it was used to make some of the food, and then we can enjoy it. And we're going to read now in a moment about a farmer who went out to sow the seed. And God's word is like a seed. The Bible is like a seed. And that's why we read God's word. And God wants to grow his word to grow in all our hearts. And God sends, uh, he, do he doesn't send the wind and the rain and the, the sun into our hearts. But he sends his Holy Spirit to live in us. And that helps us to grow. And we're to grow. Let me see you all standing up here. Let me see the five of you standing up. Yes, and I remember you last year, you were only about that height, you were about that height, and you were about that height, and you were about that height here, and you were about, and now look at you, you're all growing, and then you'll be taller than me in a few years' time, and I'll be looking up at you, because you're going to keep growing and growing, and God wants us to grow, and he wants us to grow in our love for him. So will you remember that? To keep growing, just like the seed, and to keep growing in your love for God. Now, I think you've been very brave. Take a seat. Coming out tonight, if you see a bit of fruit, you, I allow you to go and take it. Now, what bit of fruit would you like to take? There's oranges, apples, bananas, melons, pears. What? Go and lift a piece of fruit. Right. The apple. Pineapple, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you like? Do you like the pineapple? Do you like the pineapple? There's another pineapple here. Okay, there you take that. Boys, what would you like? A little. A banana. A banana. Charlie, bananas. Okay, do you want a banana too? You can go back now and join your family. So, lovely to see you all here this evening. We're going to sing, or before we come to God's word, or not, we're going to invite the choir to sing. Count your blessings, name them one by one.
in a few moments, Jesus said these words, uh, part of the Sermon on the Mount, the parable of the growing seed, Matthew chapter 4, verse 26. Jesus went on to say, the kingdom of God is like this, a man scatters seed in his field, he sleeps at night, is up and about during the day, and all the while the seeds are sprouting and growing, yet he does not know how it happens. The soil itself makes the plants grow and bear fruit. First the tender stalk appears, then the ear, and finally the ear full of corn. When the corn is ripe, the man starts cutting it with his sickle, because harvest time has come. Amen. Let's join in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we join in prayer this evening harvest, we come to you and bring the needs of others. We thank you that you are a God who is good and generous. We thank you for your wonderful gifts, for all the good things which we enjoy, for the gift of fruit and flowers and vegetables and wheat, for all things bright and beautiful. You made them and we thank you. We thank you for the, the opportunities that are ours to share with others, especially those who have so little. And whether it is a shoebox at Christmas or the work of the United at Peel, or to share with the Seafarers Mission with knitted uh, hats for the men at Dublin Port, or for little blankets or jumpers for newborn babies, and for all the opportunities that are ours to share on a daily basis with the food bank even as we approach Christmas. So Lord, we thank you for opportunities and help us to resist, to be generous, to have our eyes open and our hands open, always willing to do what we can. Father God, we look out on our world this evening and we remember those whose crops have failed because of war, natural disaster. Many people are facing hunger. And so we remember all who are hungry and poor this evening. We pray for Tear Fund and Christian Aid and we pray you'd bless them as they try to alleviate suffering. We pray for them as they bring your word to people who have nothing, a word of hope. Lord, we thank you for those who work on our farms. We know it wasn't a great summer or a great autumn, but yet a harvest has been gathered in and for that we are thankful. We pray that our farmers would get a fair price for their meat, their grain, their milk and other produce. We pray for those now who are struggling with the pressures of modern farming. And so just in a moment, maybe you want to pray for a farmer or a farming family, maybe for your own family. Bring them to the Lord now. And Lord, we remember those who are struggling this evening. We remember the sick, those who are discouraged, those who are alone, those who are afraid, those who are lost. Comfort and surround each of these people, Lord. May they know your nearness and your help. And we pray this all through Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we turn to God's Word, we're going to sing, You're the Word of God the Father.
Thank you to H Hannah for playing and Alice there on the organ. Uh, storm Ashley meant Alice didn't get back to Belfast this evening, so one storm helped us here and you've helped uh, out with the music uh, this evening, so thank you. Last week we were thinking about breaking up the uh, hard ground in Mount Joy. And we need to break up the hard ground that's in our hearts and allow God to work in our hearts. And this evening we're going to be with the arable farmer scattering seed. This morning we were with Nabal, the sheep farmer. So there's all kinds of farmers in the Bible. But before we do that, harvest is all about thanksgiving. The story is told that uh, two young girls were walking through the countryside and they took a shortcut through a field. And then the rain came on and they, wanted to, they started to run to get back to their car, but they realised, uh-oh, there's a bull in this field. And the faster they started to run, the faster the bull started to run. And one of them could just about get the breath of the bull on the back of her neck. And she shouted to her friend, will you pray something? And the girl ahead of her said, I only know one prayer. The prayer that my mother taught me. Well, pray it. And she said, for what we're about to receive. <laughs> May the Lord make us truly grateful. Are we truly grateful this evening? I'm sure we are for all God's goodness to us. But we want to go with that farmer and he sowed the seed, the scattering of the seed. A man scattered seed on the ground. In the authorised version it was corn, scattering corn. I don't know if we grow much corn. I don't even think we grow much barley. Everything that I look into seems to be just grass, isn't it? Grass and more grass. But this man was scattering his seed on the ground and he had like a school bag. And he would have put his hand in and he would have been an expert. He knew how to throw the seed and it just scattered. And up and down the field he went. There was none of these uh, tractors with um, spreaders on the back. Is it like a white tail, the thing that used to scatter seed? And now it's all very precise and very scientific. The seed actually goes out and it's blown out and it's put in with fertilizer and goes right into the ground and it's probably all managed from a phone, isn't it, on a GPS, and they know how many seeds to go in. There's no more just scattering the seed. It's all very precise. But in Jesus' day, it was just the farmer was scattering the seed. A man scatters seed in the ground. And God's word is the seed. And we have an opportunity, every single one of us here in church, to scatter God's seed. Maybe to teach our children or our grandchildren the Bible stories. That's scattering the seed. Maybe to have a word with someone and tell them about Jesus. That is scattering the seed. I just want to put it out there this evening. Will you put your hand into the bag of seed? And will you scatter the seed? Will you throw the seed for Jesus? And you may be all looking at me and saying, well that's your job Reverend. But I'm looking at all of you and I'm saying that's your job. Because we're all in this together. And you can reach people and you can speak to people that I will never reach. So let's scatter the seed, the seed of God's word, to people we meet. The scattering of the seed. But there's a mystery. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know why. And the emphasis there on he does not know. Now, of course, we know all the science, but in Jesus' day, they didn't know. First, there was the little blade in the ear and full growth of corn. But night and day, God's seed grows. And there's a mystery about that. Do you know, I can preach God's word. One person will hear it and take it in and receive it. The person sitting in the same pew, it goes in one ear and out the other. There's a mystery. Jesus said to Nicodemus when he came to him, he, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night and Jesus said to him, God's spirit is like the wind. Could any of you control the wind today? Could you say, don't be blown up the Dontegi road between five o'clock and nine tonight? 
Or could you say, just keep it over there in Mount Joy, they need the one more? Or could you say, keep it up in Castle Derg? We can't control the waters. And God's Spirit is like a wind. And God's Spirit will blow wherever God's Spirit wants to blow. There's a mystery, and we are not in control of what God is doing. Night and day, God's kingdom, because this is a story about the kingdom. God's kingdom rises and keeps growing, and there's a mystery about it. But maybe God has been speaking to you over recent weeks. Maybe allow God's Spirit to speak to you even tonight. The growth of the seed. All by itself the soil produces the grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel and the head. There's growth. I did some research on that and I better just get it right. Fact, find and get it all right here. A corn plant can have five heads and each head has 22 seeds. That comes to 110. One seed can have 110. Imagine having a yield like that. That puts my apples to shame, doesn't it? <laughs> Imagine you invested money. For every pound you got in, you got, what is it, 110 back? Wouldn't that be great? But there's growth. And God's kingdom is to grow. And saddens me when I hear the churches are declining and shrinking. Because it's not the way it should be. Because God's kingdom is to grow. And God's kingdom is growing. And just think of it. When Jesus left this earth, he had 12 disciples. And when he ascended into heaven, he had 120 people following him. And then in the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people came and believed in him. And today there are people right around the world following Jesus. How did that just go from one man and 12 disciples and 120 and 3,000? Because God's kingdom is a growing kingdom. It grows by itself. And it's gradual growth. First the stalk, then the head, then the full corn. And we need to allow God's kingdom to grow. If the farmer planted corn seed, Back in March or April, he wouldn't go out the next day and dig it up to see if it had grown. We need to allow God's kingdom to grow. It grows. And we are called to be people who grow. Are we growing, becoming more like Jesus? Christ-like in our attitudes and in our behaviour. Are we growing in holiness? Are we trying to get away from sin and root out sin? Are we growing in those things? Are we growing in the fruit of the Spirit, the love and the joy and the peace? Are we growing in these things that God wants us to grow in? Are we growing in prayer? Are we growing in serving the Lord? Are we growing, coming to church in midweek? These are the things that will help us grow. So let's keep growing and looking to the, the Lord to help us grow, to keep growing. Because if you're not growing, well, that's not a good sign. So let's keep growing. Let God's seed grow in our lives. A farmer will plant the seed. He will fertilize it. I was going to say water it, but we don't have to do that in this country. But in some countries they do. They will look after the seed. Why? Because they want the seed to grow to produce a harvest. Because it's all about harvest, isn't it? The farmer doesn't put on slurry and fertilizer on their grass just to make it look nice and green. They want to get a good cut. They want to get a good yield. I heard two farmers talking recently about their yield of barley and I had to ask them because I was a bit ignorant in this and they said they got 2.5 tons per acre of barley. So if you don't know anything else this evening, that's a good yield. Two and a half tons. They wanted a good yield. God wants a good yield. He wants a harvest. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it. There's not many sickles about now, is there? But it's more, this was the sickle. It's now more the combine. And they're bigger and bigger. And you need gates bigger and bigger. And don't leave them on the road. Or you'll just be 
churned up probably with them. But it's about the harvest. And everything in this world is pointing towards a harvest. Because there's going to be a final harvest. And we read about it in Revelation where Jesus sends out his angels to gather all his people in. Into the barn as it were in heaven. And we sang about that a few moments ago. Even so, Lord, quickly come, bring your final harvest home. Do you know, if we sang that, we should mean it. Because what if God came tonight? Would we be in that number gathered in the barn? Bring the final harvest home, gather thou thy people in. And when God gathers us in, we'll be free from sorrow, and we'll be free from sin, and we'll be purified. And we'll... Be with the Lord forever to abide. That's what it means, the harvest. Are we ready for that harvest? Because everything that the farmer does from sowing the seed to looking after it to tending it is all for the final harvest. And tonight is just a reminder that harvest comes every year, the physical harvest. But one day, God will come again. Even so, Lord, quickly come, bring the final harvest home. Will we be ready for that day when Jesus comes to gather his people in? Will you hear on that day, well done, good and faithful servant. <coughs> Welcome into my abode. Or will you hear those words, dreaded words, depart from me, I never knew you. May we hear those words from Jesus, well done. Welcome home into the heavenly barn as it were. So in this little parable it's all about the kingdom of God. And so this evening God's word has been sown. May it take root and grow in all our hearts and lives and bear fruit so that we will be prepared for that final harvest. Let us pray. Even so Lord quickly come. We have said those words we need to mean them. And we need to be ready, Lord. And we can only be ready by trusting in Jesus and giving our life to him. And so help us to grow in Christ-likeness and holiness. Help us to be ready for that final day when that final harvest is gathered in. Because everything is working towards that final day. And help us to be in that number when the saints are gathered in. So, Lord, be with us and help us to think about these things. And we ask it all for your glory. Amen. We're going to end our evening harvest with a lovely hymn that reminds us that it's all of God's grace. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? <laughs>
cream and there's gluten free if that's a requirement just ask for that so uh, thank you to those who have prepared it and we'll give thanks for that and make our way to the church hall father we thank you for your presence with us from the very beginning to the very end of this service and go with us now into the church hall as we enjoy food and friendship and fellowship bless us then and take us to our homes in safety and we give you thanks for this harvest season as it draws to a close and make us ever truly grateful for all your goodness and all your love and help us to keep looking out for the needs of others. So now we join in prayer as we say the words of the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. So do make your way through and all is ready.